I'm going to present to you now the five secrets to maintaining a happy marriage. Ooh, I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. This, this is a light thing. This is a really positive thing. You're going to learn some things you've never thought about. And it may not be like, wow, but I think it will be. Number one, you would think that this was the most obvious and that's why I put it as number one. Number one is learn about marriage. We don't know about marriage in our world. Most of us have learned it from watching television, sitcoms, maybe movies. We didn't get much from our parents. We didn't get much from our friends' parents. And we don't get anything from these psychological articles and stuff. Marriage is not about Western psychology. It's about love. It's about joy, harmony. That's why we get married. Learn about marriage. What is it? What is marriage? How does it work? What can you expect from your marriage? What should your spouse expect from you? This is the first step. I mean, come on. And where do you go to learn? Right here. The Marriage Foundation. A lot of people are going, wow, you've turned my marriage around. Yeah, these videos are great, so subscribe. But I also have a couple of books, got lots of articles. If your marriage is in trouble, and maybe yours isn't because you just want to maintain a happy marriage, then get one of my books. You don't need the courses. Okay, number two. This will surprise you. Be humble. Humility is cool. Now, how does that translate into an action? Here's the best. The best is always defer to your spouse's opinion, no matter what. Doesn't mean you can't offer your own suggestions and your own ideas. But you see, if you are proactively humble, then what you're telling your spouse is you honor them. You recognize their intelligence. You recognize their ability to discern things and process things. And, you know, they say flattery will get you nowhere. We're not talking about flattery here. We're talking about having the proper attitude towards your spouse. Be humble. Be humble. Acknowledge them. You didn't marry them because they're some idiot. You married them because you're impressed with them. You may be stronger in some areas, but don't show off. Let them speak their heart, their mind, recognize it, compliment them. Let it be digested in your mind. Oftentimes that humility allows us to see things through their eyes, hear things through their ears that we missed. It's a good opportunity for personal growth, for personal expansion of our awareness. Humility is a great way to maintain a happy marriage. Number three. So I have number three as a woman and number four as a man. As a woman, and I'm not, I'm going to say what it is and then don't cut me off. Instead, stay with me so I could explain it. Be sensual. Be sexual. Be affectionate. Openly, overtly in private. Let your husband know that you love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. As your heart opens, let everything open. Be there for him. It is a truth that men, for the most part, have a greater need for physiological sensuality. Why hold back? Why? Give it up to him in the form of love and loyalty. You see, the problem is that in our world, we see sex as a recreational thing. We don't recognize it for what it's intended to be in marriage. In marriage, it's supposed to be a way to connect our souls by using our physical bodies. Men are not as good at this, by the way. But as a woman, you're able to tweak 
your sexual encounters and make it more loving, more positive. Do it. You have everything to gain from that. Now, number four, as a man, cultivate your devotion to your wife. Men are not easily able to open their heart. You still love, of course, but cultivating devotion is different. It takes it to another level. What it's really doing is it's exposing your soul to her soul. And it is not something that comes naturally to a man, so it's something you need to work on. What I'm saying to you is probably going right over your head. So what you should do is think about when you were at the altar and you were exchanging vows and you felt that rush of love in your heart. That's what you're supposed to feel continuously towards your wife all the time. Cultivate it. It doesn't just happen. You have to cultivate it. God gave us free will for a reason. Number five. When I wrote my first book, Lessons for Happy Marriage, I was laying out sort of the process for how to recapture a marriage. It's simple and it's written simplistically, not like my second book, Breaking the Cycle, which was written more for training marriage counselors. But what it does is in the very first part, I identify the killers of marriage so people could be aware. Guess what number one is? Number one is what I call over-familiarity. And that's happening in your marriage. Happens in almost all marriages. Where we forget that we married the love of our life. And we put ourselves in a position of wanting to serve them. To show them all the time how much we love them. And instead, what happened? We started to take them for granted. We're sarcastic with them. We complain. We criticize. We argue. Those are all anti-love. What we want to do now is proactively express consideration. If they interrupt us when we're talking, be interrupted and don't be attached. Don't worry about it. If their opinion is different than yours and it's wrong, let it be. It's not that big a deal. Start becoming proactively considerate of your spouse. What a difference it will make. Just that alone will change everything in your marriage. So those are the five secrets to maintaining a happy marriage. There's so many secrets. I'm Paul Freeman, by the way. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I used to be a divorce mediator. Now I'm saving and we're saving as a foundation thousands and thousands of marriages. Hopefully we can help you too. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you like this video. I hope you leave a wonderful comment telling me how you like my hairstyle. We want to see you again. We want to see your marriage flourish. God bless you. Come again and take care.